Today we're going to have a look at the work of a famous Scottish artist called Joan Eardley. We're going to ask our usual set of questions, so you might want to pause the video and have a chance to think. So our first question is, what is the subject? And what we mean here is, what can you see when you look at the piece of artwork? What things might you be able to see? Next, we're going to ask, which media did the artist use? For example, did they use paint? Did they use oil paint, watercolours, pen, pencil, clay? Is it a photograph? Did they use fabric? What does the piece of artwork make you think about or feel? Imagine you own the Visual Elements Gallery. There are five rooms in your gallery. Line, colour, shape, pattern texture, shape and form. Which room, if you can only put it into one room, which room would you put this piece of artwork into and why? Today's task is going to be a drawing task. I'm going to be asking you to look really carefully at the kitchen sink in your house. Don't tidy it up first, it can be much more interesting and tell more stories seeing some things that are um, lying beside the sink or in the sink. We're going to be looking at different pencils we can use, think about how we're going to organise our paper and then we're going to do some timed drawing tasks. I wanted to have a look at pencils and talk about what some of the different numbers and letters mean on the pencils. So today you can use any pencil you want to, just use what you've got at home. You might have a little set of pencils like this, you might not and that's okay. If you don't have pencils you could use a felt tip, you can use a crayon, anything at all that you can, you can draw with, write with. So all of these ones here have got a little number or a letter on them. So there's normally an H or a B, and the H means that the pencil is going to be a bit harder. So you get finer lines with the with H and 2H and 3H. And the B means that they're going to be a bit blacker when you write with them. So we start with B here and you move all the way up to 6B. And 6B is going to be the darkest one. And you get probably get a thicker line with that as well. And it'll be a bit smudgier. HB, this one's not sharpening today, but I've got this one here, is also the same as the ones that we normally write with. So that means it's going to be um, have quite a hard point, but it's also going to give us quite a black line, so it's good really for writing with, but it can be fine for drawing with as well. And this one says F on it, and that means it will sharpen up to a really fine point. So if you want to do a really detailed drawing, an F might be a good choice. Before you get started with today's task, you might want to have a play around with any pencils that you've got and think about which one's going to work um, well for you. So I'm going to have a, a little go with these ones just now and you can just, you don't have to do any drawing here, you can just do some mark making. So this one is a, a B and so I might want to, to mark so I can get quite a dark line with that one. You can have a little play around holding it in different ways as well. Making some marks, drawing some lines, have a little experiment with them. So that's B. Let's see how smudgy that one is. A bit of smudge, that might be good if you want to do some um, shading later on. If I find my 2B, you can do something similar with that. Oh, that's definitely darker. And let's 
see how that smudges up. It's quite smudgy too. Have a go with 3B. I did mean to say um, as well, it's a good idea to work with your pencil sharpen before you use them. Unless you want a really kind of much thicker line. But I think for today it'd be good to, to sharpen them up. Which is 3B. B. You can see I'm holding the pencil in a different way to do this, so I'm not holding it as I would normally for, for writing. So have a think today how you want to hold it for your sketching. That definitely feels a bit thicker. A bit more smudge on that one as well. That's 4B. And then, I don't know if I'm going to fit all these in, but let's have a look, 5B. This much feels much softer when I was um, drawing the line with it there. There's a big difference between that and my 5B. And you can always mix the pencils up, so you can, you might use 5B for doing darker parts of your drawing, and maybe some H's or the, B or 2B for some lighter parts. And this one here, so I don't think it's been used, is 6B. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's all my uh, B pencils. Something that will be useful for you to have today is a viewfinder. So, all you need is a rectangle of cardboard, fold it in half, and then I'm just going to cut out another rectangle shape there. So when I open it, I should get a rectangle. Now it's really important when we're using our viewfinder that the shape you cut out is roughly the same shape as the piece of paper you're going to use. So today we can work on rectangular pieces of paper. But if I was going to be working on a square piece of paper, I would want this to be more like a square. So I'm going to use my viewfinder to find a little area that I, I want to focus on to when draw. When you look at the area that you're going to draw, you'll see there's a lot of different things there. So when I'm looking at which area I'm choosing to draw, rather than drawing everything, I'm going to use my viewfinder and I'm going to have a look at just one area. So I might focus in, say, on the tap, the compost bin, and the sink. Okay, I could also turn it around this way if I wanted to. I could focus on a different area. So have a think about what you're going to plan to draw in, and that will really help you with your sketching. So there's lots of different things that I could include in here. Find a really good composition. I think I quite like this one, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go with that for now. When you're sketching, it can be useful to have a board to lean on. So you can see this one I've made here. Um, it's to this apart. It's just a cereal box, um, which is being cut. I've just cut the front and the back off and put them together. Just to make it a bit stronger. And you can put your paper on. Just use clothes pegs on here. You could use paper clips, or if you've got a bulldog clip, you could use one of those. And that just keeps your paper in place, and it's really handy to have your paper um, in place so that it doesn't slip around when you're drawing. You could easily just use a book as well, do the same sort of thing. So you could get a book. Do you remember if you're drawing on top of your book, you might get mix and marks in your book, so think about which book you want to use. And you could clip on. That's quite nice and sturdy for using. You could set that on your lap and it means you can draw anywhere. So that's another idea. And also, when I was working, I made a little sketchbook from a piece of paper. Now I've used white A4 paper because that's what I've got at home 
You can use any paper you want, any colour of paper. You can also reuse paper because we're really just sketching today. And I folded this in half. And then I folded it in half again. And I can fold it in half this way. And it just gives makes up a little book so I can I can sketch in and record some of my drawings. And you can make a few of these books and stick them together. You can clip them together. You could sew them together if you wanted to hold on to lots of your, your sketches. For our first task, we're going to do a one minute drawing. This is going to be really fast. Okay, so you're not going to get lots of detail, but you can really look at shapes, you can look at where things are, and think about what you can fit into your drawing. So don't worry about getting lots of detail or shading or anything like that. Just really trying to sketch things out. I'm going to use my folded up and sketchbook for that. And I'm going to leave the timer running so that you can keep the video going and it really, really does help you to have a timer. If you don't use the timer, you probably end up going a bit longer because the minute passes really, really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to set the timer. You can pause the video until you've got everything you need and then you can start your one minute drawing. Okay, so here we go. Three, two, one and go. Okay, how did you get on? It goes really, really quickly that minute. But hopefully what you've been doing during that minute is really looking all the time. Here's my one minute drawing um, of my sink. I really didn't get much in, but I did think about um, where my sink would fit in here, the shape of the tap, um, where they would place these bottles. It's very quite um, scribbly and just drawn in really, really quickly but it just got me looking really, really closely at what I was going to be drawing. So, that's your one minute drawing. Don't bother about trying to finish it. We're gonna move on now to have a go with a three minute drawing. So you're gonna get a bit more time this time. You can start to maybe sketch things out, like my tap's not done in much detail, but I could start on my three minute drawing and could maybe look a bit more closely at that. I missed out the cloth that was here, so I could maybe try and add that in and think about this bottle shape a bit more. So think about what's at, at your sink and what you could focus on a bit more in your three minute drawing. So I'll set the timer again for you. Okay, hopefully you've got everything ready. If not, pause the video now. And your three minutes starts now.
stop there and have a look at your drawings. How did you get on? This was my three minute drawing, so I started to get a bit more detail in. I got quite interested in drawing the taps, so that's something I might want to do in my next drawing. Focus a bit more on that and managed to get a bit more shape in on the top of the tap and drew in the compost bin and tried to get these elastic bands. So I was really looking closely at everything that I could see and I kept looking up all the time, really keep looking to see what you can see in the picture. Don't draw what you think it looks like, just keep looking and draw what it actually looks like. Next I'm going to do a 10 minute drawing, so this is going to be our longest drawing that we're going to do. I'm not going to set the timer for this one, so if you could set the timer yourself for this, just because the video will run on a bit too long. Okay, so when you're working on your 10 minute drawing, you can really think about the areas that you want to focus on, that you want to draw in a lot more detail, so you'll have a bit more time. You might even be able to put a little bit of shading in, so you can shade some dark shadows, and some, maybe some, show some highlights as well. Okay, and if you go off and start that 10 minute drawing now. Okay, so this is my 10 minute drawing. Um, in this one, I was able to take a lot more time and really look closely at the taps. And I quite enjoyed drawing this part. I thought I'd get a bit more done in 10 minutes than I actually did, but I think I spent so long working on the taps, I didn't have an awful lot of time to draw other things. Um, one thing I noticed when I was doing my 10 minute drawing are the tiles in behind. So in the other quicker drawings, I hadn't added any background in. So my one minute drawing, I hadn't added any backgrounds into those. So I was able to put a bit more detail in. I could add a bit of lettering and things in. Um, I could start to draw this cloth in a little bit more detail. So it'd be really good to see how you got on with your 10 minute drawing. If you wanted to, you could continue working on them or you could start another one. But these are, it's a really good exercise, just finding a little corner in the house to draw and timing yourself and really, really looking closely.